What is going on you guys? Welcome back to another video and to the channel. So in this video, I'm gonna be installing a new dash cam on my BMW E90. Now it is actually the same exact dash cam I've been using on the F30 for about a year now. So the dash cam I'm gonna be showing you guys in this video today is the NEX C2 dash cam from Nexar. I'm gonna be giving you guys a full overview of this dash cam. I'm gonna be showing you guys how to install it using my E90. And then I'm gonna be going over all of the features and talk about the things I like about it, the stuff I don't like about it. That way you guys get a nice overall look and overview of the dash cam. That way you can decide if this dash cam will work for you. So starting off here, taking a look at what will come in the box once you receive your dash cam. Go ahead and open this up here. So it will come with a few cards here with some information on the dash cam, but I will just go over all of the information with you without reading all that. So here are all of the parts that will come with the dash cam. You can see our main unit here with the camera. We're going to take this out here. We'll come with some little clips that will hold the wires that we have to run inside the car to the dash cam. Here is our suction mount, our power cord, and then here is our power source. And then finally, just a little pry tool for tucking the wires uh, behind some of the interior pieces. So this dash cam comes with a front facing camera that films everything that is happening in front of your car through the front windshield. And then it also has an interior facing camera that films everything that is happening inside the car. Now the really cool thing about this dash cam is that it has its own internal memory and cloud storage. In addition, Nexar also has an app that allows you to pair your dash cam to your phone, which allows you to view all of the videos your dash cam has recorded and saved in the cloud. So you don't have to take out a memory card and go to your computer and then input the memory card and then look at all of the videos that were recorded. You can simply just view all of the videos right from your phone making it super easy and convenient to save videos if you need to and all that stuff. So I believe those are all of the important features I wanted to mention before I got into the install. If I forgot anything and they come up later in the video, I will for sure point them out to you guys. So let's go ahead and get started on installing this dash cam. All right guys, so taking a look at the interior of my E90 here. Installing this dash cam should be very easy. So I would start by inserting the USB power port into the power outlet here. And then I would run the power cord from here, down here, down by the pedals, underneath there. And then once it gets to this area here, I'll probably tuck it behind this and then run it all the way up here to this point right here. And then I'll tuck it inside here, inside the, where the airbag is. And then I'll just tuck it behind underneath this piece here. It's kind of moved, so I'll tuck it back behind there all the way till about right here and then this is where I will mount the dash cam somewhere in this area. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on doing all of that. So before I go any further in tucking the wires away, I was thinking it's probably a good idea to check to make sure that the dash cam works, like just turns on in general. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in real quick. All right, so the dash cam is not turning on, so I'm not sure what's going on here. All right, so I was kind of confused there, but um, to turn the camera on, on the E90, you have to put the car in the ignition mode, so you have to press the start button twice. Uh, I have this camera in the F30, and there's only two modes, or there's only one mode in the F30, so it just immediately turns on as soon as I get in the car. But regardless, it does work. As you guys can see, the light is on, so it does receive power. So now that I have confirmed that it does power up, I'm gonna go ahead and finish tucking in all of these wires. So, so far you guys can see I've just tucked it in back behind there, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and tuck it underneath this piece here by removing those three T15 screws, just so I get a cleaner look so it's not, you know, dangling by my feet and the pedals here.
right, so I have finished tucking in all of the wires. I put it back behind here, and like I said, underneath this piece, and then it just comes out right here so it can connect to the dash cam. Now, I did have a bunch of extra cord, and it was kind of too much to tuck behind back here. So I just tucked in a good chunk of the cord in this section here, because there's more room, and ended up with a near perfect amount of cord left to connect into the dash cam. But yeah, this worked out perfectly, because now you can't see any wires. They are all tucked away, unseen here. Down here, you can kind of see it there, but I'll fix that later. And then it's underneath this piece right here, so you can't see any wires. All right, so now that I got the wires all tucked away, I'm gonna go ahead and mount the dash cam. As I mentioned, it comes with a suction cup mount, and then this top piece here will slide into this little groove right here, so it's nice and secure to the suction mount. All right, so I have mounted the dash cam. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the dash cam and then pair the dash cam with the Nexar app on my phone. That way we get a live view and we can go over all of the features of the app and everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and start up the Nexar app and go through the process of pairing the dash cam to my phone. So since like I said, I already have the same exact dash cam in the F30 already, I already have the Nexar app and I've already gone through the complete setup process and everything so I won't be able to show you guys all of that but I will show you guys the pairing process and all of that. Now I have an iPhone so the steps to you know downloading the app and pairing the dash cam may be a little bit different if you have an Android but taking a look at the app store here you can see the Nexar app so I'm gonna go ahead and open up my app so once again, like I said, since I already have the same exact dash cam in the F30, I already went through all of the setup process. So I won't be able to show you guys what that's like, but um, it's pretty easy to follow. Once you download the app, um, it'll give you all of the instructions to set up everything and then finally pair your dash cam. So since I already have mine paired, I just need to unpair uh, my current dash cam in the F30 and then pair this new one. So I'm gonna go to more and I'm gonna go to dash cam. And then we go down to pair a different dash cam. So if you have multiple cars with multiple dash cams, for some reason you're not allowed to pair all of the dash cams into the app. You have to unpair whichever dash cam you're using and then pair the new one that you're going to use in whichever car you're going to be using for the day. I don't know why they haven't updated it yet. I believe you can do that on Android, but not on iPhone. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to unpair the current dash cam. I'm going to go ahead and put the car in ignition mode. So that the dash cam turns on. And the dash cam does have power. And that is the startup sound that you'll hear every time the dash cam turns on. It is kind of annoying a little bit um, hearing that every time you get in the car. But I believe you can turn that off. So now that the camera is turned on, I'm going to go ahead and continue. Now it's going to be looking for uh, your dash cam. Okay, make sure Wi Fi is on when you're doing this whole process because it does connect. Uh, through Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, so make sure both of those things are on on your phone. All right, it's connected, so now let's set it up. Uh, let's check if there's any updates. I don't think there is, but go ahead and see. So it's up to date. Connect Bluetooth. All right, so it is all set up here. Since, like I said, um, I've already done the whole setup process uh, for the app itself. So this went a lot quicker than if you were just starting, you know, brand new with a dash cam, never having never downloaded the app or anything like that. So now that the dash cam is paired, we can go over some of the cool features. So right off the bat here, you can see it's using your location. I'm not sure why the dot isn't showing up, but it, it will use your lo current location if you allow the app to track the location of the dash cam. But if you go to stream here, it will connect you to the live stream of what the dash cam sees. As you can see there. And here's where you can adjust like the angle of the dash cam. Since when you first install it, you can't really see what it sees. So here you can see, so it looks like it's kind of too low. So I'm gonna go ahead and push it upwards so it gets more of whatever's happening in front of the car. So that's better. And then if we go here, you can switch to the interior camera. You can see me talking 
you can see it gives like a pretty full view of what's happening you can't really see like what's happening over there on the passenger side and what's happening kind of over here on the driver's side but you can see like what's happening like behind the car so it's all right if it doesn't have you know a camera like back there facing through the back windshield and not seeing whatever's happening inside the car so yeah that is pretty cool now as long as you have your wi-fi and bluetooth on as soon as you get in the car and the dash cam is started up it will begin recording your drive uh, for however wherever you're going and it won't stop until you end the drive either by pressing the end drive button or whenever the camera turns off after you've gotten to your location and turned off the car and everything and then if you go to videos you can see all of your drives that you have had in the last few days now the camera does come with 128 gigabytes of memory to store drives and everything and after it is like maxed out it will delete all of the old videos that you haven't really used or done anything with so it can create space for all of your new more recent drives now these are my drives from the f30 uh, since it's like a cloud so it saves all of the drives in the cloud uh, no matter how many dash cams you have and you guys can see here it will automatically save any driving uh, incidences where there's hard acceleration or hard braking or if it detects collision it will automatically save the video to the cloud and mark it so that you can easily see where it is so this harsh acceleration here is probably like when I just probably did like a hard acceleration with the F30 like I do sometimes so yeah guys it will save all of your videos automatically and then you can view them whenever you don't even have to be connected to the dash cam to view them now this dash cam does come with a parking mode where it will start recording if it detects any sort of motion or if any sort of movement with the car like if someone's shaking the car or trying to break in it will start recording now the only thing is is that you can't see the recording unless you connect to the dash cam it will save in like the internal memory inside the dash cam and then once you connect it with your phone it will then load onto the app now this dash cam records in 1080p which is high definition it's not obviously you know 4k or 2k but it is still really good quality and it is you can clearly see you know what's happening it doesn't look all pixelated or anything like that it is a nice clear video footage of what's happening um, in front of you and inside the cabin it also has night vision so when you're driving at night and it detects that there is no sunlight it will automatically start recording in night vision and infrared I believe it's called I'm not sure honestly so that you can see you know what's happening still um, inside and uh, in front of the car so now getting into more of my overall opinion and things I like about it things I don't like things I could have done better uh, with this dash cam since like I said I've been using the other dash cam this identical dash cam but in the F30 I've been using it for almost a year now so I have a really good idea of what I think about it. So overall I really like this dash cam. It is probably one of the best budget dash cams you can get for your car. Now this specific model from Nexar costs about $190 to $200 just depending on your options. So it's not super expensive, it's definitely not the most expensive dash cam you can get. It is about in between I would say from being the cheapest and the most expensive but over the last year I haven't had really that many complaints with this dash cam I haven't you know been bothered by um, a bunch of different things with this dash cam it's never you know malfunctioned or anything I've never had any issues with the app connecting or you know saving videos downloading videos I haven't had any issues with the dash cam itself and its functionality now getting into things I really like about this dash cam Probably my favorite thing about it is that it has the cloud function where it will save all of your drives in the cloud in its internal memory in the dash cam and then as soon as you connect to it with the Nexar app you can see all of the videos that have been saved and recorded and then you can download any of the videos and trim them to a certain point that you want to save or show somebody and the download process doesn't even take that long so the overall like functionality of the app and its connection with the dash cam is really really smooth and really really good and I haven't had any issues with it it's just super convenient because you don't have to you know take out a memory card and then go to your computer insert the memory card and then look through all of the video files from the dash cam you don't have to do any of that you can just simply look in your phone or connect to the dash cam with your phone and look through all of the 
files and videos of all your drives over the last few days so it is just super convenient i really don't have much complaints about this dash cam over the last year of using it um, but i do have one kind of significant issue with this dash cam only it's the only thing though it's the only issue i have with this dash cam it's the only thing that makes it not perfect now, for some reason, this dash cam, since it is always paired to your phone every time you get into your car, it turns on, connects to your phone, and starts streaming the drive, starts recording the drive. And it is using uh, uh, the location of the dash cam through your phone or something like that. And it just uses up your phone battery power really quickly, like really quickly. It uses a lot of power, a lot of your battery power from your phone. So, so after a few months of using this dash cam with the F30, I noticed that my battery power of my phone would go down so quickly. And I thought it was just the phone, because you know how like, after a few years of having an iPhone out, like the battery starts kind of not holding charge as well, and it starts running out of battery power uh, quicker. So I thought my phone was just like, like the battery itself in the phone was just losing power just because, I don't know, like iPhones do that after a couple years. And then I realized that um, it wasn't the phone itself, it was actually the dash cam that was using up the app, like the Nexar app, was using up so much battery power from my phone. As you guys know, iPhone has like a feature where you can see all of the apps that are using the most power from your battery. I took a look at mine and it showed that the Nexar app was using pretty much 50% of my battery power of my phone while the other apps were only using like 10% or less so the Nexar app uses a lot of battery power from your phone I really don't know why it does that um, like I showed you guys it has the uh, iPhone battery power optimization feature on the app that you can turn on I didn't even know it had that but I eventually turned it on when I found out that it was the app and it still hasn't really done much it kind of helped but not really my battery power still drains uh, really quickly and way quicker than I would like it to. So yeah, that is the only and kind of moderate issue that um, comes with using this dash cam and the Nexar app. Now I've looked at reviews by other people who also have the same dash cam or just any Nexar dash cam in general because it isn't really the dash cam, it's the app. And they have all experienced the same thing where it, it, it just drains your phone battery power for some reason. And it does get annoying, um, especially when you're not even like in the car driving and still uses uh, battery power uh, from your phone for some reason, even though you're not even connected to, to the dash cam. So yeah, that is the really the only issue I have with this dash cam. It's just that the app uses so much battery power from your phone. So what I've been doing is just I put a charger in my phone and I charge my phone whenever I'm driving so that it kind of makes up for the, the power that is used when it is connected to the dash cam and recording on the app. Everything else about the dash cam is fantastic. It is an excellent price, I would say, only $200. I would think this, this dash cam would be more around like $300 or more. But for only, you know, $180, $190 to $200, depending on uh, what options you get, I think this is a reasonably priced uh, dash cam for what you get. You get all of these cool options. You get the cloud option where it saves all your drives. Uh, on the dash cam and then as soon as you connect it with the Nexar app you can see all your drives, download anything you need and then it automatically starts recording your drives without you having to press anything. In addition, I haven't had any issues with it in its functionality. It's never, you know, lagged um, or anything and it's never stopped working. So yeah, I overall I really like this dash cam. It is an excellent dash cam option. So I would 100% recommend this dash cam to any of you guys out there looking for a dash cam. If you don't have one, I definitely recommend you get one. It doesn't have to be this one, but I would definitely recommend just getting any dash cam for your car. If you, you know, care about your car, I would imagine majority of you who watch me care about your car. So overall, I rate this dash cam probably like an eight out of 10, eight and a half out of 10. It isn't perfect, but it is really cool and it has all those cool features. I haven't had any issues with functionality with mine. The only issue is just, it just drains too much of your phone battery power. So as usual, I will leave a link directly to this dash cam, directly from the Nexar website. If you guys want to check this dash cam out and possibly get one, 
for yourselves. It'll be down in the description of this video. If you guys have any more questions or comments about the dash cam, as always, feel free to comment down below the video and I will respond there. So I think that is going to do it for this video, you guys. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did and subscribe for more content like this if you liked what you saw. Also, feel free to check out my website at inline6auto.com where I am growing a collection of aftermarket accessories for a few BMW chassis like the E90 and the F30. I'm still expanding into others. I'll also leave a link down in the description of this video if you guys want to check it out. But anyway, I will see you guys in the next video.